Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be getting to know what is the other name of JavaScript? What are the active versions of JavaScript that is currently in the industry? And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to tell you the three most frequently asked JavaScript interview questions. Let's get started. So the first one is you need to keep in mind that JavaScript has a trademark name and the trademark name of JavaScript is called as the ECMA script. JavaScript is the common name and the trademark name is called as the ECMA script. It is from an organization called as ECMA International. And ECMA stands for European Computer Manufacturer Association. That's the full form of JavaScript. I'm sorry, that's the full form of ECMA. Currently, there are active versions of JavaScript. One happens to be ES5 and the other one happens to be ES6. Now, when you go out there in the job market, you are supposed to be knowing both the versions of JavaScript that is ES5 JavaScript, that is the fifth version of JavaScript and also the sixth version of JavaScript that is ES6. As part of our level one course, we're going to be doing the ES5, all of it. And then some of the features of ES6 is going to be covered in the level one course. And some of the advanced concepts of ES6 will be done in the level two course. The ES5, that is the fifth edition, was introduced in the year 2009. And again, keep in mind that JavaScript as a language has evolved over a period of time. It was first introduced in 1995. Um, it was then called as the ES, uh, ES1. You had the ES1, you have the ES2, and then there was three. So those versions are there. But the most prominent ones that we are supposed to be knowing and working with and most of the projects that are going to be working on in the company is going to be of ES5 and ES6. The ES6 is basically the sixth edition of the language. It was introduced in the year 2015. So six years apart, the new version of JavaScript was released. ES6 is also known as ES2015. People can interchangeably use. They can say ES6 or they can say ES2015. Both of them mean the same. 2015 here is basically the year of release of that particular version. There have been a lot of new features that have been introduced in the particular ES6 version. And then you as a JavaScript, modern JavaScript developer, you need to know what are the new features that the language has offered. Before we get into the list of new features that have been introduced by the language, you also have to keep in mind there is a process called as transpilation. That means to say converting the code that we have written in ES6 to ES5 is called as transpilation. Now, why is it done? Because not all the browsers in the world support ES6 as of today. ES5 is supported across 99% of the browsers in the world, but not all the browsers support a ES6 feature. So what will happen is you and I as developers, we will always go on to use the newest, the latest and the greatest features a language has to offer. But then, we will convert it back to the ES5, not manually. There are tools that are available that will help us convert ES6 to ES5 or anything above uh, ES6. There is ES7 also, but we'll talk about that a little later and uh, it'll help us convert. There are tools available like one, the most prominent one and the one that we're going to be seeing as part of the course is called as Babel. It's called as the Babel JS. It's a transpiler. What does it do? It'll help us convert ES6 to ES5. Some of the features, 
some of the new ES6 features that have been introduced by the language. Let me just zoom out a little. Yeah. Is the new way of creating variables using the keywords let and const. While you're working with strings for string concatenation, they provide you a new feature called as template literals. All this you will be learning in the level one version of the course. You're going to be learning about what object literals are. You're going to be looking at what is destructuring of assignments. You will also learn uh, function default parameters. What are those and how to work with them? You will learn about the arrow functions. So these are all the things that you're going to be learning as part of level one, the rest and the spread operators, class modules, generators and promises are going to be learned in the level two of the course because these are slightly more advanced and you really need to know or have a use case as to why you would use a feature like that. And all these happen to be the most, uh, all these happen to be the new features that the language has gone ahead and introduced. And I would say a majority of the interviews that are uh, being conducted for, let's say front end developers or back end developers for JavaScript. One of the most commonly thing is what are the new ES6 features or they would probably go on to ask you, have you worked with ES6? Okay. Now's the bonus. The three most frequently asked JavaScript interview questions. There are many, you will learn about that as and when we go ahead in the course, but the three most frequently asked interview questions, are you ready for it? Yeah. So the first one happens to be, they'll go on to ask you, okay, tell me the difference between var, let and const. How does it differ? That is with respect to working with variables. The second question happens to be what are arrow functions? Why do we use arrow functions? Can you create an arrow function and show it to us? And the third one happens to be what are promises and why do we use promises? These are the three most frequently asked JavaScript interview questions across all different stages, be it a fresher, be it a, a one or two years experienced developer, three plus years experienced developers. These are the questions that are always asked in the next video. We're going to be starting off with the next section where we learn about what are variables. And by the end of the next section, you will be able to answer the first question. What is the difference between var, let and const. I'm really excited to get into the core part of our course in understanding variables and using them. I'll see you in the next lecture.